Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Today I am bringing you 22 of my favorite spring DIYs. And as always, I hope you enjoy the show. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. So this is my inspiration piece off of Pinterest that I saw last year and I fell in love with this you guys and I think it's because of all the grooves and texture that it has. It's not made from like a factory cookie press type situation. I think that was very homemade and the wood was left more, you know, in its natural state. So the Dollar Tree bird houses are smooth and factory made and sanded you know so i'm using spackling on top of this to try and bring back that wild wood look so this i'm just going to take a craft stick apply it like frosting and then instead of trying to smooth out all of those lines i'm going to try and recreate grooves and looks of bark and grain you know i guess like chopped wood like firewood now if I, I know that I can't get it identical because, you know, this is the Dollar Tree birdhouse, but if I can even just capture the energy, which I do think I succeed at doing, I'm very happy with it at the end, then I'm happy. And it's, you know, a lot of these are inspiration crafts, of course, so they're not going to be identical, but if you can catch the same energy, the feeling that a craft gives you when you look at it, that joy that you get you've hit your mark, at least for me. It doesn't have to be identical, but if it brings me joy when I look at it the same way the photo did, I know that I'm on target. So after the spackling dries, the next day, I go ahead and give it a coat of white acrylic paint just to give it a little more structure and protection so that the spackling doesn't crumble off. And now I'm just taking some of the darker gray called Pavement from Apple Barrel and I'm dry brushing it on to accentuate those grooves but I know that I need to smear it and make it look kind of hazy and cloudy and grayish and you know just like the picture it wasn't a totally clean white paint it looked like it was dirty so I'm using a wet sponge oh my gosh you guys I need to get a new sponge that's looking pretty tatty isn't it <laughs> but it works, it does the job. It, it does a lot of scrubbing, I'll tell you, to clean the surfaces where I craft. But that's what I'm gonna do. And now I'm applying the wax. It's, you can use any wax for this. It's an antiquing wax, it's brown. And I'm going to lightly do the same thing with the sponge, just purposely smear it so that you get a little bit of the, like a stain almost everywhere. And then I'm gonna, you'll see me in a bit, I will go over to accentuate all of the design that I put in there that I don't wanna lose either. This is just the starting point. Yeah, and that's what we have now. We're just going around the hole there to accentuate that, make it look dirty. We're just doing our distressing and our normal, you know, making things look rustic and kind of you know, earthy and pretty. And I decide to, I want that little sign. Now on the original piece, it's a sign that's hanging off of the little wood pole that the bird would sit on but I don't have that option because it would be too low to the ground. Mine is, you know, the Dollar Tree one is lower down. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it up on the rooftop, but I think it still comes up super, super cute. And speaking of surfaces to craft on, you guys, I discovered floor tile. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Everything comes off a of floor tile. You just take a razor blade, even super glue, E6000, I mean, everything comes off. It is a wonderful, you know, I just felt bad wasting so much craft paper because I kept pulling out tons of butcher paper and craft paper and throwing it away. And anyway, I'm so impressed. I ordered a 32 by 32 inch porcelain, huge crafting tile to use in upcoming videos as my complete crafting tabletop because they are so durable and wonderful for crafting and you can paint directly on them and just wipe them off and it's all good. So you saw how I deliberately cut that craft stick crooked. I edged it with a bit of brown paint, a little bit of that blue paint. I just kind of dry brushed it and scribbled it on there, wrote the word Easter. I don't have the best handwriting, sorry you guys, but I wanted it to look homemade so it's all good. And that's it, and I love this.
And this little guy is just the classic Dollar Tree Easter item that you find at most Dollar Trees. And I know there's somebody out there pulling their hair out because he's never come to their Dollar Tree. But most Dollar Trees do have this little ceramic bunny. And he literally just shouts tear tray decor when you walk by him. He just needs a little bit of painting. That's actually how he sold. He sold with a little paint kit at the bottom. It's super cheap, nasty paint. But you can use uh, obviously more expensive paint. Last year I did a really soft version, but I looked at him this year and I thought, you know, we're going to move you. We're going to put you, he was packed away for Easter, but we're going to put him on the tiered tray this year. And we're going to make him more modern and more pronounced, I guess have more personality and more character. I started off painting him white with acrylic paint. Last year I just left him, you know, in his natural ceramic state. But this year I wanted him painted. I did decide to leave his ears pink, but we're just using a fine tip black Sharpie pen to give this little guy some personality. For this DIY, you're going to need one of these little wooden square pictures and three carrots from the Dollar Tree. This is some little oh, vine that I got at Hobby Lobby. It's like a eight foot wrapped vine, I think, of little tiny mini leaves. And I thought it would be perfect for mini crafts. So I snatched that up. And I'm starting off by giving this one coat of white acrylic paint. I don't have a lot of white but honestly it is a very beautiful farmhouse look and I don't have a lot of it and I think it's especially appropriate for Easter time so I was really looking forward to getting white paint happy here and slapping white paint on everything because it's a very you know it's springtime so it's a nice light bright clean look now I decided to pull out the I don't know the raffia that comes out of those carrots because it's kind of cheap and nasty and it's super easy to do because it's styrofoam and you just poke whatever kind of greenery you want down the center and voila you have much more expensive looking greenery coming out of your carrots i mean it really just notches it up to a very you know a more expensive look really easily so take the time to do that if you can you guys because it does make a difference and now I'm just drawing my little faux lines for planks there on this I'm not worried too much because it's small so it can look a little faux-ish as long you know you just want the look and I'm taking some of the pewter gray this time and dry brushing and I'm doing the same technique I did with the birdhouse I'm just kind of you know dirtying it up just a little bit because I like my decor rustic you don't have to do this you can leave it snow white with the planks if you've got a modern farmhouse and you want that look that's also very pretty and crisp and clean looking but I kind of like it a little bit rustic and distressed and you know gently antiqued so that's what we're doing now And now I'm just gluing on the carrots. You can certainly stop here because this is definitely a less is more craft. I mean, it looks good just as is. You don't have to go any farther. But when I lifted it up and I was kind of checking it out, I thought, you know, there I am. I'm doing it right there. I want to make a little mini sign for this one too. So see how I'm cutting and I'm deliberately going at angles and kind of turning my scissors there. I'm trying to make a little mini farmhouse sign for this because I thought that would just be so, so cute. And it's going to say, rabbit eats free. 
because I knew when I moved my tear tray down to my kitchen and I decorate everything, I wanna sit that little white ceramic bunny next to this sign. And I just thought that was such a cute message. It's like everyone else has to pay for the you know, carrots, but the rabbit eats free. So anyway, you can leave this out if you want. I just thought it added so much cuteness to this craft. This is also found at many Dollar Trees, and this is a super easy DIY. I don't even know if you can technically call this a DIY, but I thought I'd share it with you because, again, this is something when I walk through my Dollar Tree, it just kind of screams tiered tray decor. And there's so many things you can do with this. I mean, you can make these up for Halloween, you can make them up for fall, you can make them up for Christmas. We're making this one up, of course, for Easter and spring season, and we're gonna slap some white paint on it because that's the first step there to get it nice, fresh, and bright, and cheerful for the season. So I removed that little key thing on the top. I am giving it a coat of white primer first, and then I give a coat of the acrylic paint after that dries because I don't want it anything to chip off. It is kind of a shiny surface. And now I'm just using a sponge with a little bit of the pavement color again from Apple Barrel and I'm just giving some little accent and dimension and that's it this was a super easy craft it's super fun looks super cute on my tear tray very very classy looking when it's all painted up now the top of it I want to add some spring flowers but I could kind of tell the way the top was with the big hole in it was going to present a little bit of a challenge for gluing flowers on and having them stay there was really no strong surface up there so the solution to that for me because you can see how it's kind of lumpy there it just everything just seemed like it you had to be there I guess but it didn't seem like it would hold things well so I decided to go ahead and take some Dollar Tree jute twine wrap it around a little bit tie it and then that's what I'm going to glue the floral accents on because they will definitely stay that way so here I go I'm just going to glue some flowers in pink and yellows and greens and spring colors and that's it that's the extent of this craft you guys and I absolutely love the way that this craft came out For this craft you're going to need some of these wood tags and some printouts of your choice now these are free printables they will be down below in my description box and you're going to cut whatever you choose whatever print that you want to use you're going to cut it out as close as you can to the edges and i'm going to use my glue stick because i have mentioned in previous videos for those of you that have been watching that this works really really well for Pretty much a guarantee for no wrinkles and no mess ups and so especially when you're dealing with little tiny petite crafts you really want something that you know for sure is going to stick and if, it, if you're wondering if it's sticky you can see there I'm showing you it's actually sticking to my finger and I'm scared I'm gonna tear it it's a very sticky glue and you get eight to a package for a dollar you can't beat that going on now six weeks with the original craft I did that was huge and it's sticking great everything's perfect so really really pleased with those Dollar Tree glue sticks definitely worth the money and now I'm taking some burnt umber just going around the edge to give it a little bit of distressing and this is a pin trust inspired craft I have to be honest I saw these tags up on Easter tier trays and I thought they were so cute they didn't look anything like these these are my own creation but I just thought the idea of having little tags up there as accent pieces in the tiny little areas on your tier tray would 
makes such a cute decor piece. Now this little guy is a little too light. I don't know why he didn't print out, so I just take some pencil and just make sure you can see his legs, his arm, and give him more definition. And I tie a little gingham bow on the top there for him and a lace bow on the other one. And I'm just using that sponge now to outline their bodies. I decide after I do the bow that they need to pop just a little bit more. But honestly, you guys, I love how these two turned out. For this next craft, you're going to need some Dollar Tree wood beads, these little white buckets found in the wedding section, and these sticker letters from the Dollar Tree. So for those of you that were wondering, what do I do with these obnoxiously loud wooden beads? <laughs> because they are super rainbow. I mean, they are so bright. So if you're into like neutral colors or, you know, I think farmhouse even this, you know, the rainbow isn't in, this is a great DIY craft. And again, it was a Pinterest inspired craft. I just saw it. It didn't look just like this. This is my own creation, but she was using the raw wood beads to make a carrot. And I thought, oh my gosh, how cute. So I glued them together. You just pick them out in different sizes and make your little carrot shape and cuticle clippers. Oh my gosh, those are turning out to be a wonderful craft supply, you guys, for snipping off extra hot glue that's hanging over the edge where you don't want it to be seen wonderful tool i use it all the time and i just wanted to mention that in case you guys haven't thought of it and here in my supply i have the green twine i don't know where i got it from i've had it for years but it's finally come in handy now for this because i'm going to use this for the top of the carrots and i'm making a tassel very thin and i'm also tying the bottom of it closer to the top because i don't want too big of a bulge at the bottom there and that's what you end up with but if you don't have green you could just use the brown one from the dollar tree and then hit it with a little bit of green paint and a sponge in fact that might even look better because it would have all the character and dimension but you can make it work and this is what we end up with you guys it's super cute so now we need a little place for these carrots to go and that's going to be the bucket but i'm really into the little signs this year for easter i just think it's so so cute i'm in a cutesy mood so we're making the sign carrots for 25 cents and this burlap here is also found at the dollar tree it's in their birthday section their burlap banners they're usually sold all year round at least at my dollar tree they are and they are great for crafts if you just want to grab some burlap real quick without having to go into another store and you know cut yardage and pay for it you know it's or order it online really quick way to get some crafting burlap just for little crafts and i'm using the reindeer moss I'm gonna sit these guys down into this bucket and this is just a super cute DIY for Easter for a little tiered tray. I love this. For this craft, you're going to need these little wooden squares here, and they are sold at the Dollar Tree. Someone came on and told me that, and I also saw it in another video, so you can use those. This is from my lovely subscriber that has sent me tons of crafts, and I do incorporate them whenever I can. I can't always say it because I don't want to drive everybody crazy by saying it all the time, but I'm so grateful to her, and you know who you are. Thank you so much. These little roses there, I made those from the same recipe that I used to make wooden beads in my DIY wooden bead video. If you want to know about that video, go check it out. I'll leave the link in the description box. But I had some left and I rolled it up and made roses for spring. And then this is a sign that is a free printable. It will be down below my description box. And here's where I get really annoyed, you guys. My camera battery ran out while I was filming how, you know, I just glued it on, but I made the frame using hot glue and I'm showing you now really slowly because you can figure it out what I did I just went and put lines going down and created like a faux wood grain 
This only works on really small petite signs. It just gives it character and some um, 3D effect for frames. I wouldn't, I tried it on a bigger sign once and it just looked not, not, not good. But for little signs like this, it's a fun, quick, cheap way to get a frame on it and you know it takes seconds to do and you can do whatever designs you want if you want your frame to have little curly cubes or little dots maybe like little beads but it's just a fast quick way and i often forget about it but i didn't want to cut craft sticks i just wanted it to have some texture turns out when i put that burnt umber on it was a little too dark so i put a little bit of the country tan on by apple barrel just to kind of soften that up and i go back over it with white and then i decide you know that looks too light so you can actually see me bring out the definition again because I'm losing the definition of the frame but before I do that I take a little bit of pink paint and I'm just sponging just the tips of those roses I did paint them white a lot of people ask me if they can paint those beads you can with acrylic paint I've never used any other kind of paint so I can't vouch I've never colored them well actually I did use some um, iron oxides once they're dry powders and that colored them but the colors were so pastel that I wasn't happy with the outcome so I always end up painting them with acrylic paint now I'm just adding a little burnt umber back into the frame there to give it some dimension and I also hit the roses a little bit to distress them and antique them those roses are what make this craft I don't know if the camera's going to do it justice but they just are so gorgeous the 3d effect and I just think they look so pretty at the top but this is what we end up with when we're all done <laughs> For this craft I'm using a hula skirt from the Dollar Tree but if you have some raffia you can use that too and a mayonnaise a lid any lid you can find like this you just need some kind of shape and I'm gonna go ahead and paint this lid brown using my favorite color you guys I talk about it all the time the burnt umber from Apple Barrel but I just love this color I think it's an all-around color and it works you know it's just very versatile and I'm just sponging it on because I want to tone the white down just a little bit. And now I'm going to start cutting long strands of the raffia up. And you're going to see me take sections of it like this and twist it and start creating a bird nest. Now, if you happen to have Spanish moss at your Dollar Tree, one, I'm totally jealous, and two, use that because that would be a lot easier. <laughs> but if you don't, uh, this is a great DIY to show you guys how to improvise, which is pretty much what I had to do my whole life. I was crafting way before there were Dollar Tree crafts, Dollar Tree videos, before there was YouTube. I also lived up in the mountains where there just weren't a lot of store choices. So even though they had just built a 99 cent only store down the mountain, I just didn't have access to it. We would get snowed in and, you know, I just pretty much for a decade there had to improvise that was like the story of my life a lot of you guys ask me how do you think of these things and I think that really is the ticket there when you're cornered you know kind of backed into a corner and you have no choice and you want beautiful home decor you would be surprised at what you start looking at and thinking about you know how can I make this work so my mother-in-law told me about a hot glue gun and when I discovered that it was just sky's the limit. I had so much fun. I bought my first little glue gun and it was like completely thrashed within like a year after I used it because I loved my hot glue gun. So anyway, I found out while I was doing this craft, it was easier to tie a knot and then glue it down so that it doesn't come apart while you're pulling and twisting. And you're just gonna see me twist and keep wrapping this around and around to create the bottom and the sides and create a little bird nest. When you finally get to this point there, it's a, it's a good start, it's a good frame, but I wanted it to have that look. 
you know it kind of has that I, I still I was after that Spanish moss look so I took this straw I think it was Easter straw I got for Easter basket I honestly don't remember where I got this straw but I knew I had it and I also knew it wasn't the right color I didn't want to move too far into fall so you're going to see me glue this straw down I'm just patient I keep breaking it in little pieces I keep putting hot glue on this nest and rolling it around you'll see me put hot glue here and then I kind of roll it down on the broken pieces there and you just you know I'm I'm watching a fun movie there I'm having fun so I'm just enjoying myself crafting it's fun and you know it was a little time consuming but it was fun and I was pleased with the results when we were done but of course it's not the right color so what do I do I take my favorite paint burnt umber add a little tiny bit of black because I want that color kind of of a Spanish moss and I just start going for it I just start tapping it with a brush tapping it with a brush and it's very very messy I'm using my fingers and hands they get covered in paint and so I actually pick it up and that helps um, put more paint on it I guess and then I take a little territorial beige and go over it because I'm just trying you know I'm trying to think of what a real bird nest looks like and what I'm trying to create there and I'm really close I'm really happy with it this is what we get the next morning when it dries and I have an old bag of this moss but it's all just broken little bits it's not good enough to create the whole nest and I don't have enough of it so that's why I had to do the straw but I realized the border you know if I put it on the border it will give it exactly that missing touch and it works really really well look at this you guys we have a nest and i love this all we do is add some eggs and we're good to go For this next craft you'll need some reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree, some craft sticks, and a box, any old box, some little eggs of your choosing, and some pretty napkins of your choosing as well. And last but not least, these are the cheap nasty eggs I got at the Dollar Tree last year before they were selling the carton ones that they probably still, they probably have the Easter stuff out now at my Dollar Tree. But to be honest, I had so many good ideas ready to go and I had enough craft supplies I didn't even go check. But I start off with these eggs here and I take my cuticle clippers. I clip off any kind of edges that are jutting out a little bit too much. I use my hot glue on the inside to close these eggs up so I don't have to worry about them opening while I'm working with them. But I showed you how they had holes in them which freaked me out and then I realized look how handy they come in. I'm going to take these outside and spray paint and I use some, some foam that I got from a package that was mailed to me some skewer sticks i poke those little babies up into the holes on the eggs take them outside and spray paint and everything's great so i'm just using mod podge with a little bit of water here and i'm going to start to apply those flowered napkins next i'm taking a color i mixed up with a little bit of blue and gray to create the egg colors i want to do you know they're very on trend right now the brown and blue eggs i want to create those and i happen to love the way these dollar tree foam eggs look when you paint them the rough texture i think they are so so pretty so everything that I just did with the eggs now is drying and I decide of course we need a little wooden crate like a little farmhouse crate to stick all these pretty things in on the tier tray you know I just I didn't want to put them on grass so I'm just taking this box here and I'm going to go about covering it the whole thing with craft sticks so I invite you to follow me on Instagram and on Pinterest. You can reach me there. But I really want to talk about Pinterest real quick because I have a lot of new subscribers who may not be aware that I created a board for my subscribers crafts. I absolutely love to see your crafts just like I love to craft. I love to appreciate what you guys do, especially if I've inspired you and you make something that I made or a version of it or just something that I made inspired you to craft something else. I love to see it. 
it. And a lot of people ask me, you know, how do I share my photo with you? So you go to Pinterest, you create an account, and you upload your photo as a pin. And over there on Pinterest, you can private message people. So you just send your pin to me in the email and I will get it and then share it to that board with your name. And we have some absolutely fabulous crafts. I mean, the page is huge now since I started. So I just wanted to create a place where we can also share your creativity with the world. And when I put it up on my Pinterest, it kind of helps get it out there. So the whole world can enjoy your gift too. So make sure you send me your crafts, you guys. I love to see them. I am getting a lot of email now, so I'm kind of falling behind. I'm doing the best I can. If I don't get back to you right away, please don't get hurt or offended. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Just leave it sitting there because I go through my emails when I can, and I love to see your crafts. So please go check out that you know what we have so far over there on Pinterest go check out everybody's crafts we've got some very talented people and some absolutely beautiful crafts up there and here you saw me using some spackling just to fill in the edges when you're all done covering these boards you know I was squeezing the craft sticks together so you couldn't see the cardboard at the top and that created some tiny little gaps at the bottom no big deal a little bit of spackling and it was gone painted it white and now we're just putting our pretty little eggs in and this is it For this craft you'll need this free printable which is also down below in my description box and I'm using the like layer of white napkin that was left over after I peeled them apart you know how those printed napkins have two layers to them and I'm going to just add again a little bit of Mod Podge and water for this craft I'm showing you approximately you know how much water I added mix it up really really well because I have kind of an, a vision with this craft. I saw some eggs on Pottery Barn just laying on a table. It was like staged with another craft, but I wasn't looking at the main craft. I was looking at the eggs going, ooh, what are those? Those are cool looking. They almost looked like they had like wrinkles in them and they had a bunch of texture and dimension and really primitive and rustic looking. I really liked it. So I had an idea and it turned out really good, but this is how I go about doing my egg. Their eggs might have been wood, I'm not sure, but my eggs are going to be Mod Podged and Deco Podged with napkins. So I'm putting layers and layers of torn napkin on here and I'm kind of using my fingers on purpose to squeeze and wiggle the napkin and press to make sure that it gets lines and textures in it. I don't want it smooth and I'm tapping with the sponge to get that effect. And then I cut out, you know, I didn't cut all of them out, but I chose my favorites off of those stickers. They're all beautiful. Actually, I had a really hard time choosing, but these are the three that I chose. And I'm going to Mod Podge those on the front as well. And this is what we have the next day. Now, I decide to paint these snow white because I have a very, very specific look that I want. I mean, you could leave them. I had a little bit of shadow under there because I had decoupage some of the roses on there by accident on one of the edges and so I had to paint this guy and then I thought "Ooh, that looks really good and you know what else it did the paints thick so it made the bunnies actually kind of sit back and become level with the surface of the egg they didn't look like they were I don't know if that makes sense but the napkin was thinner and the paper was thicker and once I painted them they were all the same level which looked really really nice so now I'm taking a little territorial beige and I'm just going to dry brush them that's it and then take some burnt umber go around and give them a little frame but I'm going for the French country look I absolutely love French country it kind of crosses over to shabby chic a little bit but especially around Easter time I am such a sucker for that but I have to make it tie in with the rest of my farmhouse decor and these eggs worked perfectly for my tiered tray I absolutely love them I always ask you guys to pick a favorite and some of you were saying I don't want to pick them if you like them all oh my gosh I love you 
you can tell me you love all my DIYs. I love to hear that. But if you have some favorites, I'd love to hear that too. I just love to hear feedback from you guys. I love you guys so much. Thank you for your support and your love. I appreciate it more than I can say. So now I'm taking some Dollar Tree rounds right there and I'm just gluing them on. Those are their little stands and platforms and we're all done. <laughs> Now I got some questions about this on my last video. For Dollar Tree signs, I love to show you how to dupe those when you can. So I've got this nice little Dremel right here and it cuts it in seconds and it's super easy to do. I've got it down below in my description box if you're interested in buying one. But I go and get this 1 8 of an inch, 4 feet by 8 feet wood. It's a utility panel. It's just plywood and it is the same thickness as a Dollar Tree sign. So when I did the math, you can get 41 Dollar Tree rectangle signs out of this board and about 37 square ones. And those are just the standard skinny square and skinny rectangle Dollar Tree signs that they sell. And obviously if you bought them, it would be 35 or th I'm sorry, 37 to 41 dollars. So this is a way better deal as you can imagine. I make a lot of signs and you also don't have to deal with gluing the signs together if you need them to be bigger. So there's a lot of pluses going this way and that's why I do it. And of course I love to show you how to save even more money when you can. So for this size sign you're going to need three rectangle Dollar Tree signs and I took mine out, spray painted it black. Now for the Dollar Tree signs I actually think it's better if you glue it on a poster board. I think it makes it more structurally sound. You can do the craft stick way if you want where you glue craft sticks on the back but make sure you really glue them on there in different directions so it doesn't fall apart. That's another reason I like using these boards. You just don't have to deal with that. It you know, you can make whatever size you want and it's a little more structurally sound. But nothing wrong with the Dollar Tree signs. They totally work. And if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I'd be buying those signs and crafting with those. So go ahead and use those if that's easier for you. So I'm using the Dollar Tree wooden letters here. I'm just tracing out the words Happy Easter, every bunny. And they sell these little poster letters as well. I use them like stencils. They, you know, you can use any letter shape that you want for stencils, but that worked and it fit really well on this board. And now I'm just taking my chalk board pen. This is actually a chalk pen. It's wet and I use it like a paint marker and I'm going to go ahead and trace out these letters. So I love my chalk pens so much, but for filling in, they're not so great. They don't tend to have the vibrancy and you end up having to do two or three coats and it gets way, way too expensive. So I like painting. I find it very therapeutic and relaxing and I'm using a paint called Craft Smart here. I absolutely love that paint. It is an ultra matte dry. It is only $14.99 for 64 fluid ounces. And as you can see, it covers in one coat. This is a new paint for me. I bought it on a whim. Really, really happy. I'm not sponsored by them. I just think it's a really nice paint and worth the money. And I think it might, I mean, when you hold the Waverly chalk paint in white next to this, it looks identical. So I think it might be more cost effective. And if you can't find a chalk paint that you're looking for, this would be an option that you could look into. So I'm going to go ahead and fill these letters in, as you can see, and then I'm going to go ahead and put some twine on the top of this sign. Now I should mention this was a Pinterest inspired craft. I saw this 
I think last year and I thought it was so cute. I took a screenshot, so I'm trying to copy it. I can't find my screenshot. I'm going by memory, but I do a little dry brushing to add a little distressing on the front there. And then I'm going to close peg these Dollar Tree carrots on the top of this twine. Now I used the bigger close pegs, but my carrots were kind of shooting up like torpedoes. So that didn't work too well. Make sure you get the tiny little mini close pegs. And I decided to add a bunny. Now. It just felt like it was missing something. I can't remember if the one I saw had it or not, but I just took some paper, held it up to my computer screen, traced out a bunny shape, cut it out, and then I drew it in the center here. Now, instead of coloring it in solid, you know, painting it solid in the uh, bunny, I decide it will look better just with kind of a scribble. I don't know if there's a name for that technique, but I didn't want to fill it in all the way, but I love the way this came out. Let me know what you think. For this next craft, you're going to need three of these wooden squares. And I'm just applying some white acrylic paint here in a very haphazardly dry brushing manner. I want the edges of this to stick out because I want the wood to show. And I don't want it to be a really heavy coverage in the middle as well. I just kind of want to shadow this almost with a little bit of white. There it is right there, almost like a cloudy look. That's what I'm going for. And now I have this print. Now I own this print and I took a picture of it and printed it online and cropped it. But if you look up watercolor rabbits, or I'm sorry, watercolor Easter bunnies, beautiful, beautiful imagery comes up, including this one. So you can actually buy this one if you want or use it or whatever you want, it's up to you. Now we're going back to the glue stick here because it's it's a, just an easy way to get paper on without it wrinkling. I am applying it to the paper this time and I'm being really thorough about getting it all around the edges on an every single part of that surface because I don't want these guys to lift. <laughs> so you saw me edging it there with burnt umber and using my finger to smear it a little bit and this is what we end up with. Now I'm going to use some craft sticks from the Dollar Tree. You can use any size that you want and I'm going to connect them in a vertical way. Now it, I can't give you exact measurements here because if you want to connect it going horizontal you'll probably do it a bit different. You can use ribbon as well that would be really pretty and you may want them farther apart, closer together. But what I wanted to point out here is when you use wood glue and hot glue, never mix the two glues together or you will deactivate the hot glue. I see a lot of people do this and then <laughs> their craft will go, oh, it, it fell apart. And, and so I just wanna let you know, I don't know what goes on there, but I, maybe it cools the hot glue too quick before you can get it to do its job because the hot glue really is just attacking method to get it to stay instantly. And then that wood glue is what's going to dry and make a more permanent strong hold. So I just wanted to let you guys know, be careful to put those in different sections on your crafts. Don't mix them. And here I'm using two rows here of the Dollar Tree twine to make a back for this. I'm going to go ahead and cover these edges with some uh, masking tape just so they hold a little bit stronger because that's all you need. This isn't a very heavy craft at all. But I really, really love the way this came out, you guys. I was going for a Beatrice Potter feeling rustic Easter craft, and I love this.
For this craft, you're going to need some of these Dollar Tree wood planks, a waste basket in any color, and you're going to be cutting that waste basket up, and you will be using four of the wood planks. I'm starting off using some wood glue with a little drop of hot glue, but it's not really strong enough to hold these. So, you know, you're challenged a little bit initially because they're so thin and you just have to move really slow. So what you do is you use a little masking tape there to hold it together. You're gonna see when I turn it around, I'm really, really gentle, but it does stay up and it stays up so that I can put the top on. So we're making kind of like a little window box here. And again, I'm not mixing the hot glue with the wood glue. I'm just putting a little bit of wood glue on the edge there because that's what's gonna hold it really strong. The hot glue is literally just to give me an instant hold so the whole thing doesn't fall apart. And what I'm using instead of clamps, because you can't really clamp this because of the shape, is masking tape. You can use painter's tape. I wouldn't recommend duct tape because it might leave a sticky residue and you know you don't want to have to pull it apart really hard when you're done when it's dry. And this is how I go about applying the hot glue for a little bit more protection. I'm doing a thin ribbon then I'm going to take my 100% silicone spatula that I got at the Dollar Tree. You can get these at Walmart also on Amazon. There's a link below in my description box if you're curious and I'm just rubbing that down to make it nice and small because I am planning on staining this. Now this is the next day after drying overnight. I'm gonna remove the masking tape and I'm gonna go about staining it. I'm using my burnt umber mix with a little drop of black paint and that's approximately how much water I put into that much paint. And it makes a great stain for wood. I did have to put it on twice. So I put it on, kind of dabbed it off so it didn't get too wet, and then I put it on again and we got this color right here. So I'm taking the waste basket that I cut up from another craft that I did in the fall. This is a great dupe for chicken wire, you guys. I'm sure you've seen it before. I did take my hands and stretch it out as much as I could in either direction, and I just marked it with a permanent marker, as you saw, and we're gonna glue it on the back of this little box here we're making like a I don't know if it's a window box really because I'm putting the back with the chicken wire but make sure you trim the edges of the wire so that it's nice and flush with the surface of the wood that way you won't get scratched or poked when you pick up your craft and it looks nice and tidy that way I'm just using some wire clippers I got at Walmart and here's the problem when you have glue in the corner of things the stain just doesn't soak into the wood like it should easy fix just use a little black paint you'll cover it it's a great camouflage and it works great so i have a white waste basket and i'm using the apple barrel paint in pewter gray to paint that gray initially and now i'm going to use this folk art shimmering silver shiny um i for iridescence i think iridescent paint to make it look like metal. So if I had gotten the black waste basket, I don't think they had any when I was shopping, I would probably just use the iridescent paint on that. That would be fine, but I needed some gray there. So two steps for me. Now I decide to take the nutmeg color by Apple Barrel and just add a little bit of rust. And you can't really see it here, but you'll see it at the end in the final reveal how good that rust looks. It really adds so much charm because I wanted it to look antiqued and distressed and it just comes up beautiful here's a bird i got at the 99 cent store for 99 cents we're going to be giving him a little bit of a makeover here because i want him to be to have a certain look here i guess this you know this craft could also be a french country craft for those of you that are fans of french country but i just give him a coat of my white acrylic paint one coat and now I'm taking, yes, that's a blush brush. I actually got that from Five and Under. It used to be a mermaid tail, but I cut it off. And I dabbed him with a bit of pewter gray. It was a bit too dark, so I took some more white paint, went over the pewter gray, and then I decided to use some black paint because I definitely wanted him to have some chips and look nice and antiqued. 
So now I'm using some school glue on cardboard. I love to do this, that way I can glue the reindeer moss down, also from the Dollar Tree, and I can change this out for seasons. If you don't have a ceramic bird, just use the white little birds they sell at the Dollar Tree in the floral sections, that would look just as cute. And this is what we have. I'm gonna put the birdie in there, a little bit of greenery, and set it up, and it makes an absolutely beautiful spring decor piece. For this craft, you're going to need four shims or four painter sticks or some rulers from the Dollar Tree, a square Dollar Tree sign, and the Dollar Tree calendar you see me using right here. We're using the bunny month here, the month of April, to make a really cute DIY. So I'm really pleased with the results I've been getting with the glue sticks and at the Dollar Tree you can get six for a dollar so even if you use one for the entire project it's worth it. I didn't. I, I think I used maybe one eighth of the stick there but I'm just not getting any wrinkles at all now. Thank you to those of you that came on. There were quite a few of you and told me about an iron-on method for Mod Podge. I'm going to try that and the upcoming DIYs here that definitely sounds like a winner but I stuck with my glue stick because it works and it was fast and easy so now I'm taking some of the water acrylic stain and I'm adding a little bit of water to it here because I just want to darken up those shims just a little bit I do end up doing a second coat with a little bit of black acrylic paint in it because it didn't quite get dark enough the first round but I didn't film it but I just wanted the dark you know the wood to be just just a little bit darker um, it's a little deceiving when you use water because the wood gets wet so it looks like it's darker and then when it dried you know I didn't quite get the look I was after And here's the color we end up with after we add a little black paint. And I'm just using a pencil here to mark off where I want to cut the shims. Now the neat thing when you work with shims is that they are a graduated angle and the ends on one end are really thin, about three inches up. You can cut them with regular old scissors, which makes it really nice and easy to craft with. You don't have to get any power tools or a saw. Now I'm taking some wood glue here. I purposely put it on the end that's gonna hit the wood because the raw wood to the raw wood with a wood glue is going to hold super strong and then I'm using the hot glue up towards where the paper is so that I get an instant hold and we're just going to make a frame for this cute picture. Using some Dollar Tree ribbon, I'm gonna make a bow. I just decided that this needed something a little extra. I love bows, especially at Easter time. I think it just adds a cute little touch to your crafts. Sometimes if I'm going for a really rustic look, I'll skip it, but during the holidays, specifically the seasons, you know, the, the uh, fall, and then the Christmas season and Easter, I do like to use bows. I think it adds kind of an, an, another little dimension of festivity. So this is some burlap ribbon with lace you get at the Dollar Tree. And I'm showing you how I make my bows. It's really simple. I just crisscross them and then I just kind of crunch them in the middle and tie them with the thinnest piece of twine from the Dollar Tree. I actually use that jute twine because it's really thin and it's ideal because you can't see it really once it's tied. But it's not hard to make this bow at all. It's all just adjusting, you know, I'm squishing it down and looking and kind of, I keep moving the folds in different angles till I get the look that I want in the front. Mm -hmm. 
And because this craft is for Easter and spring, I'm going to add a little accent of greenery. I actually love the accent of greenery for all year round farmhouse decor. I just think that looks so pretty. This is boxwood from Walmart. If you see that, it usually comes out at springtime, sometimes a little sooner and goes through the summer. Snatch it up because it's a great deal. There's a lot on there. I think it ends up being cheaper and more cost effective for accent anyway than the uh, Dollar Tree uh, florals do just because you can cut so many little pieces off. Now here I'm doing something different. I decide to add lace to the back to hold this up and I'm putting some masking tape on the edge here. Now usually I put it on the glue still hot and the masking tape kind of melts into the glue and it really helps create a stronger hold. I've done this for years, but I'm going all the way down the edge here so that when you hold the sign, it feels a little more comfortable for your hands because the edges were a little rough even though I sanded them and I didn't want any splinters. But this is what we end up with and I love this. <laughs> For this craft, you're going to need three tin cans, and I took mine out and gave it a coat of spray paint with Rust-Oleum Primer. It's a two times cover paint, some scrap material, and I'm using a Dollar Tree heart here to make some bunny ears. You can just trace a pattern off of your computer screen if you want. If you hold your paper up to your computer screen, it works great. You can trace it softly. Just make sure you're using a soft tipped felt pen, like a washable, felt pen so if you get a little ink on your screen you can just wipe it off although to be honest I have used a permanent marker before and that comes up just fine with rubbing alcohol so it's not anything really scary if you do happen to notice you get some ink on your screen if you're tracing and I'm using the scrap material this is an old shirt that had a lot of holes in it's actually one of my husband's favorite shirts but it was beyond repair so it ended up becoming one of my craft supply items now and we're just going to trace out and make a set of three bunny ears. I'm using a little poly fiber fill from an old pillow, but you could use a cotton ball too and very little, like I shredded this apart and it almost seemed like nothing. It was very wispy. I just wanted these to be a little 3D, but most importantly, I wanted them to be able to stand up on their own once I pushed the skewer sticks through them. So that was how I did it. If you guys wanna put wire in the air, I mean, there's obviously different methods. You could starch the material, however you want to do it. I just thought that this would look super cute if they were just a little 3D. And as you can see, I've just been using regular old hot glue to seal up the edges. You can use a fabric glue if you want, but I'm not planning on washing these bunny ears, so I'm just sticking with the hot glue to seal up the edges. And there's our three pairs of cute little bunny ears. And now using some apple barrel paint in a light pink. I actually took a pink and white paint and mixed it up. This is a custom color here, but I just wanted to add a little bit of the Easter color because I knew I was going to be taking the color Country Tan, also by Apple Barrel, and just going around the edges of the ears a little bit there just to make them look a little bit more rustic and give them some definition. These are some poster stickers, also from the Dollar Tree. At first I was going to make all three of these cans with little bunny faces and different kinds of faces, I guess. So that's another idea for you if you want to do that. But then I thought, you know what? This would also be super cute if I just did a reverse stencil on these cans and then made 
it say hop with the bunny in the middle here so I took the H and the P they stick down really easy and now I'm just using some burnt umber paint I'm gonna go around and create some shadow now the burnt umber is going to be a little too dark so you're going to see me take some white paint over it and just kind of smear it a little with my finger and make it I mean there's no rhyme or reason for this this really is a very rustic very farmhouse look I'm just kind of creating almost like a dirty look and I'm deliberately smearing out this stain to make the cloud kind of disappear and feather out on the edges. If you're new to my channel, I do recommend that you do hold on to your cans and any jars that are like mason jars or a nice shape, mayonnaise jars. I do craft with them a lot in my crafts. I think they naturally lend themselves to a farmhouse rustic look. They look good in other looks too, depending on how you decorate them, but do hold on to those things. So I'm taking some of these little sticker beads that you find at the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna go ahead and apply them with a little bit of hot glue. They weren't quite sticky enough to make some eyes and I paint those eyes black and then I decide to add a little dimension with some white acrylic paint in the front just by randomly brushing on white here and there just to make the bunny part look a little bit brighter. Now to give this cute little guy some whiskers. That wire there is also from the Dollar Tree. And I'm cutting two the same length and one a little bit longer. The little bit longer is going to go in the center to, you know, well, you'll see right there. You can see it. It's just a little bit longer in the middle. I thought that looked cute. I'm using one of the Dollar Tree heart stickers for the nose. Now when I put the sticker over it, it's a little lumpy and I like it because the eyes are 3D and the nose kind of looks like a real, you know, if you look at a bunny nose, it does come out. It does have texture and it has that little line up the middle. And I thought that looks cute. For what I was doing, it actually worked. So I was happy with that. And we're just finishing off his little face. Now I am going to use some Dollar Tree skewers on the ears here. I show you at the end the set where all three cans have the ears in and at the end only the bunny does in the center. Let me know which one you like better but I thought you'd like to see it both ways because both ways are an option. And we're just using some lamb's ear from Walmart and this came out so so cute you guys. I love this craft. <music> For this craft, you're going to need a candlestick. Mine's from the Dollar Tree. You can find these usually at thrift stores as well, and a little glass globe. Again, you don't necessarily need a Dollar Tree for this. Now, I'm using these moss stones from the Dollar Tree, but here's the fun part about this craft. You can use rocks, you can use raffia, you could use marbles, you could use like grass from an old Easter basket. You could even use leaves and grass from outside because as they dry out, they still would look really, really cute and seasonal. So I start off by taking this ribbon from the Dollar Tree and adding a little bow. You can see I cut it up on the side there. And I'm adding a little bit of hot glue to hold this down on the top. I'm not making it super strong in case I want to change this up for seasonal decor in the future but you could also add Easter eggs. I decided to make mine more of a spring theme so I can leave it up for spring, but you could certainly make this Easter. I thought about doing Easter, that's why you can see an egg there on the side because I thought, oh, I should do an Easter one. And you can, you can change it out. I might choose to put some Easter eggs in there, but I thought I'd do a quick DIY for those of you that don't have a lot of time. And this just came out looking so high end and so pretty.
For this next craft, you're going to go ahead and need a cardboard box and a pool noodle from the Dollar Tree. Now, if you don't have pool noodles, that's fine. You're just going to have to cut out about four frames of cardboard to get the thickness that you need and that would work too. So the first thing I do is I use a template that I got off of online. I trace my computer screen and I made an egg shape and then I'm going to take that egg shape in about a half inch and cut it out. You're gonna see what I do here. I'm gonna cut out the middle and then I'm gonna pop that middle out. this is what you end up with now I'll be cutting out two of those all together and if you want it thicker you're going to need to cut out about four or five and do this exact same thing if you don't have the pool noodle and I'm going to be cutting just one of these up the middle and make sure it is the middle you guys so take your time measuring there because it's going to need to fit together down the road here next I'm going to be cutting the pool noodle in half and pool noodles are great by the way if when you come across those in the Dollar Tree please snatch them up because you can use them for so many different crafts I had a great Christmas craft I had planned that I didn't have time to get to and I'm going to get to it next year but anyway yeah cut the half in half again and then you're going to cut that half in half again and then you're going to cut that little fourth piece in half again so I did that a total of four times Next, you're going to go ahead and cover your cardboard with these foam pieces. Now, you're leaving the outer edge of the pool noodle on the outer edge of the egg there, and you'll be able to tell when you're doing it because the inner edge kind of has a graduated angle, so that part's going to go on the inside. You want the thicker part on the outside. And of course, you trim up any loose pieces, and this is what you have when you're all done. You're doing it to both sides of that cardboard, and you're going to do the exact same thing to the half pieces that we cut on both sides as well. Lastly, when you're all done with this, you're going to want to go around and just clean up any edges and even it out as much as possible so that it's nice and even. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just even it out the best you can. Next, we're going to be gluing this piece down in the middle, so take your time, and you're going to be doing it on the other side as well. Now, the foam does melt a little bit, but it's good because it makes the cardboard touch pieces and it adds more strength and, you know, don't worry about it. In other words, we're making an egg sphere arch here, kind of like an open arched egg sphere I guess I'm not sure I've always wanted one of these now you see that I was going to use some spackling there cover up the cardboard and paint it and then I changed my mind and I thought no I'm gonna go ahead and take the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and wrap this up because I think that looks so cute and to be honest you guys I don't really have any of that in my house anywhere and I certainly don't have any for any holiday decor and I just think this is such a cute look for farmhouse for farmhouse boho for just plain old boho for even French country depending on how you decorate it this is just such a cute look. I love the twine wrap stuff. So I'm gonna try and be adding some more of that into my home decor over the summer here because I just think it is such a cute look. So now I'm taking some of the twine and I'm wrapping the top of it here to hide the foam. I did it on the bottom as well. And I'm using a little bit of fire to burn off the stray hairs. I'm gonna take an old coaster, turn this upside down because the upside down part is cork. It looks perfect add a little hot glue to get this baby to stand up on his own and I'm going to be making some embellishment for it here with ribbons now this is where you can change this craft up a lot if you're French country use more lace if you're more of a modern farmhouse maybe you want to use some iridescent ribbon if you're boho use some mop thread I mean you can really make this your own at this point but I'm going to take a little bit of the Dollar Tree ribbon here, cut it in 
four even pieces and then glue that so that it drapes either side because I wanted to add a little Eastery feeling here because this is going to be an Easter craft for me and I'm using the ticking stripe ribbon to make a full bow that's what you saw me doing a minute ago I just wrapped it around my fingers I cut it in the center tied it with some twine and now you're gonna see me pulling it out and kind of twisting those loops to make the bow nice and full and this is going to be on the top of this guy So I end up popping this cute little full bow on the top of this and I end up placing the whole thing inside a riser that I made as a Christmas DIY. If you want to know how to make that, that will be below in my description box, a link to that video. But I fill it with moss, with Dollar Tree Easter eggs flowers. There it is, you guys, and it comes up absolutely gorgeous. For this craft, you're going to need a mop head, some cardboard, and this printable, which I will have in the description box, a square Dollar Tree sign like this. But I'm going to be using this wood here, which is an old corn crate sent to me from a lovely subscriber, Dina. Thank you, Dina. And some scrapbook paper, or you can hand paint it either way. Now, I'm using a cutout because the one from the Dollar Tree is a little bit smaller than I wanted for this particular craft. You can use that. They do have these shapes. I think they're foam bunnies, and occasionally I see the wood bunnies from the Dollar Tree in this shape but you know I'm this is going to be a great video for those of you that don't have a Dollar Tree around you or don't have very good Dollar Trees around you because I'm going to show you how to do it with cardboard. I have a philosophy that anytime you're going to cover something up not to waste the wood unless you actually need to see the wood that's when it gets really important and my Dollar Tree believe it or not my biggest best Dollar Tree has not yet unboxed their Easter stuff and I just got sick of it and I said you know what we're gonna find the exact same shapes as a Dollar Tree online, and we're gonna show you guys how to make some really neat DIYs. So you can see what I'm doing here. The first thing I did is I tried to cover the ear, and then I thought, for what I wanna do with this DIY, I've gotta start from the bottom up. So I started putting the yarn string or the mop string at the bottom and then I trimmed it just to see if it was going to work. You don't have to do that right away. I just wanted to test it to make sure you could definitely see the shape when you were done trimming. And you're going to keep adding these little mop threads, you know, and go slow. I actually would pull out the third, like I'm holding it up right now. So picture the third mop thread from the right or the fourth one. That's where I'd make my first cut as a measurement to make sure that I didn't go too high because you want it to fall in a nice area. You know, whatever you want, if you want them to be in the middle or a little higher, but you want that thread to fall in the right area. So just take your time, cut slowly, lift three at a time or so and cut you know, hold it back, look at it, brush it a little bit, make sure that it's all straight. Now this craft was a bit time consuming, but in my opinion, it was totally worth it because it came up so, so cute. And you saw there around the neck, when I started gluing, I did glue in at an angle a little bit and then I kind of brushed it out to the side. So what I did was I squished the mop yarn thread kind of together in the center so I could pile in more. So the fringe still looked even, but I was able to get the shape of the neck where I was going up around that neck. So you'll see me here with the ear. I kind of push it in there. See, you'll see me add one more when I look like I can't. I'm going to push it in. See that? I start to pile it all in and because there's so much hot glue, I just pile and press. And that's pretty much how I handled every, you know, tough corner and curve and it worked perfect. So just do it that way. And now I'm showing you how I held up three and you can see that I've cut that fourth one in already. So I have a guide and I'm gonna cut like that. 
really important because it is a time consuming craft and you, you know, it's hard to pull off. Even if you put it on wood, it would be hard to pull off. It would leave fur behind. I mean, you can. I did pull off some of the air and it worked just fine. You, you just have to kind of use your scissors and cut down. Actually, you know, you can do it. So don't panic. If, if you have to pull it off, pull it off and just go slow. Don't tear the cardboard. If there's a little fur behind, use your scissors to cut it flush again so you can glue on top of it. It'll work out fine. And now I'm just finishing off the top ear. So what you see me doing here is taking advantage of those threads on the side to cover the cardboard. Another option which you could do, and I didn't think of it at the time until afterwards I went, oh Holly, you know, you could have just taken the mop thread apart because it breaks apart in three or four different strands and taken the thinnest strand and then just taken a thin, thin strip of hot glue and then edged the bunny. But I was afraid if I used the big mop thread at the time, I was thinking, oh, that would make the ears disappear, you know, where it kind of goes down in the center by his head and then you wouldn't have definition. So just so you know, you can edge it that way. I'm just using regular old school glue when I glued that scrap paper down. And you can also just hand paint those planks on and dry brush and do it that way. You don't have to have the paper. I just thought this paper was really beautiful and I bought some. That is from Hobby Lobby. They are bigger than Michael's. Totally beautiful. I love their designs even better. So check it out if you live near a Hobby Lobby. I actually order online, so check it out. And that's it. Now I'm just gonna hot glue this little bunny down in the center. I chose sisal rope because I made this guy so big that when I went to make a frame out of the shims, he was actually too big, he wasn't gonna fit. So I switched it to the sisal rope, which I ended up liking better. It made it look more rustic and more farmhouse. I'm adding a little burlap bow and I absolutely love this guy. So I have this basket that I was using to hold some towels in in my bathroom and my cat decided to chew the handle on one side and I didn't want to throw it away because I love baskets, especially during the Easter and springtime for farmhouse decor. If you don't have one though, this Dollar Tree plate would work just fine. You can cover both of them in this primer paint. That's what I did. And this is what we end up with. I did a light coat too, because I just wanted it to look like a whitewash. You also will need some black foam board and I'm going to be cutting out that black foam board to fit in the center, which was a little tricky, you guys. And I'll tell you, I had to keep trimming, keep trimming. Eventually we got there, but I did end up pressing in some craft paper inside the center there and pressed really hard to get creases to give me a better pattern. I recommend you do that. It was a lot easier just to use some paper and press it in there to get your edges really well. Yeah, thumbs up. I finally got it without damaging it. It was hard because the sides are really bumpy. So some, you know, to get it in there without wrinkling it, but see those wrinkles right there? You guys, I was so fed up. While I was trying to press it in there, my thumbnails, this is actually my second attempt with the foam board. I didn't even include that because that would have been just repetitive, but it kept, you know, the foam board at the Dollar Tree is very fragile. You get what you pay for. And my thumbnail kept making prints. It kept wrinkling. And I finally said, forget it. So I went and took some black poster board and used a glue stick. And I'm just going to glue it on top there to make it a little more durable. So we don't get those indentations while you're working with it. Because I had already cut one out, put it in, started doing my design on it. And then my thumbnail hit it and made a big groove. And I just went, we're done. We're done. We're going to do this again and we're going to go ahead and put the poster board on top and it will be a lot more fun that way because it will be a lot more durable. So I highly recommend you do that. And I'm using my sleeves here to put it down just to be sure you don't get, you know, I didn't get any glue on top of there because I didn't want any cross contamination because we're trying to get the look of a chalkboard. So I didn't want, you know, 
a shiny glue or a piece of glue on there now we end up with a nice smooth surface to work on so I'm using this Dollar Tree sign Happy Easter that I got last year and I'm gonna cut the bunny off for a template here and of course I'm gonna save that Happy Easter sign for another DIY isn't that cute I think that's so cute with or without the bunny that is so cute and I'm gonna go ahead and trace this bunny out Now after a lot of contemplation, I decided to trace this metal word from the Dollar Tree out onto the board. I was going to glue it on there, but it just seemed almost too reflective, like a mirror. I don't know, it just didn't, you know, I, I seriously stared at this for like 20 minutes. I'm like, no, we're going to do the whole thing like chalk. So I'm using these stencils. I believe these stencils are from Walmart. And I'm just going to do some cute little vines and leaves to give it a little bit of spring feeling there because it is supposed to be just a chalkboard piece of art here. And I'm using my chalk pen. This is a wet pen to trace the bunny and to fill in those leaves. I do use the chalk pen to fill in the leaves. And I also make a final decision to use the chalk pen to fill in the word bunny. I was going to use paint, but I end up just touching the word bunny up with the paint on top of the chalk pen. And I use paint definitely for the bunny, but it's just, there was something about, you know, when you, you know, it's not a real chalkboard, right? It's poster board. So it's very, very slippery and the texture just didn't feel like it felt like the paint might almost smear and have too many streaks if I tried to do it in with the words. So I stuck with the chalk pen. Someone asked me if the chalk pen dries. Yes, it does dry to a permanent uh, state, when, especially when you put it on paper. It's not supposed to on a real chalkboard. It's supposed to be erasable, but I have read comments in Amazon where people said they left it on for a year and when they went to erase it, it left a permanent, you know, um, image behind so I don't know if they're totally erasable if you leave it too long but anyway this is what we end up with you guys I think it's so cute but here's my next thing because this was a basket I could not get it to glue down flat because it was bumpy it just wouldn't stick so my solution was using three of the towering blocks and just gluing it on top of that and then to again another solution to cover the edge there because it was no longer a tight fit I used some rope which ended up being super cute I would have probably ended up doing that anyway I put a bow in the corner there to cover where the rope meets and a little bow on his neck you guys and just adding some lamb's ear for some greenery and this is what we end up with <laughs> So this is a bird cage that I bought from Michaels for a wedding decor piece. It actually sits on top of like a tiered tray, really big and high. And here are some Dollar Tree stovetop covers. I sprayed the cage with this spray paint and then I sprayed the stovetop covers with the hammers. I don't know if you can say, I'm not that impressed with the hammered one. I'm not sure about that. It looks good once I dress it up, but it wasn't, I thought it would look more like a, I don't know, I just thought it would be more contrast and a little bit more noticeable but you really can't maybe I didn't shake it enough I don't know but we will try it again that was my first time trying that and now I'm just painting the knob with a little bit of primer this is the kills primer k-i-l-z we're gonna let that dry meanwhile I'm using my favorite brush for like a faux rest and I'm pointing out that it's definitely a tweaked brush you don't want to use a brand new brush it makes it much harder to get the effect so when your brushes get kind of yucky and old save them for distressing techniques because I find at least that those work the easiest I'm using the color nutmeg from apple barrel paint and i'm just going to go about giving this some um, antiquing and rusting it up a little bit just to make it look nice and old and distressed <laughs> And 
second we're going to use the same method to do the cage on the outside and on the inside. Now where the areas of metal meet and are soldered, that's where I hit it with rust for sure with a brush because in real life that is usually where things kind of tend to erode and corrode and get rusted. And now I'm gonna take this water-based stain to make the knob wood. I put one coat on and then I blow dry it. For those of you that watched my Halloween video, I discovered by accident this was the best way to get a really good wood. I mean, look at that. You just put it on in layers and it looks like real wood. Look at it. It looks absolutely beautiful. So I choose this method instead of the wax because it works a little bit better if you want it to look like wood, like a strong polished wood. It works a little bit better than the wax, but either one would work. So now I'm just taking some moss from Michaels and I'm using some wooden eggs from Michaels. They run about a dollar and I'm starting to decorate this. But I have been waiting to antique this one for the next DIY I'm making forever now. And I think this came up so, so pretty. For this next DIY, I'm going to be using this pattern here. It's down below in my description box for free. You're going to need some cardboard. Go ahead and cut that pattern out. Now I'm going to outline it with a thicker marker because I ended up wanting it to be a little bit bigger than what I printed it up as, but you can adjust your printer to whatever size you want it to print up as. I show you how to do that in a brief tutorial in one of my Christmas videos. It's the one with the reindeer that's like flying. You can see it in the thumbnail if you want to look at that. It shows you a little tutorial on how to change any kind of size you want. So you're going to cut two of these bunnies out and then I'm gonna start thickening him up here using any means necessary. I'm using a pool noodle, but you can use floral foam. You can use whatever you want. You're just getting them thicker and you want some weight. Mine ends up being an inch and a quarter wide because I want it to look really expensive and high quality. This is a DIY, you guys, that I actually saw in Urban Home, but they don't sell these things and so I don't know where they got it from. It was just part of the decor they had all around their furniture and I think I saw it about three years ago and I have been wanting it ever since and it's just not something you're gonna find at the Dollar Tree or, you know, I've been looking online and I can't find it. I'm sure it's somewhere. I just don't know. Well, the one I saw that was similar was $68, so no. <laughs> but anyway, I end up adding the towering blocks for some weight there and for some more stability. And I'm just gonna wrap this guy up now in masking tape. So this is what this little guy looks like when you're all done. Just make sure there are no holes, that everything is covered, and there's no big pieces of tape protruding out. It doesn't have to be perfect, trust me, but you don't want anything that's really jutting out. So take a utility knife or any kind of razor blade and just slice it as flat as you can. Just make sure everything is covered and pressed down because the next step we're gonna be using you're gonna, you know, he needs to be all encased. And also make sure that he's weighed down and it doesn't matter what you stuff him with, be creative. But the next thing you're gonna need is some pinto beans. Now I took my pinto beans and I put them in a blender and we end up with faux gravel. So this looks like some of that really nasty sand you get by lake fronts or beach fronts that are around cliffs that hurt your feet when you walk. I'll tell you I had an experience you guys where I got caught up in a wave once and when I came up that kind of gravel was in every single area you can imagine. It took me forever to get out of my hair. Oh my gosh. Anyway but I wanted this bunny very natural and earthy. I love that look for springtime and Easter. I think it is so so perfect. It kind of does that whole pottery barn energy I love that and I know that pinto beans will not break down with spray paint I have had crafts that have lasted 20 years using these and I know that they don't draw ants 
and really nothing draws ants if you seal it in enough with a like Mod Podge or a clearer varnish. You know, ants don't like to eat that. So as long as anything that you use is sealed in everywhere, that's really not an issue. You just have to be careful about how you finish your craft. So I'm just going about, as you can see, covering this guy with Mod Podge and then covering him up with this faux gravel. Now, another thing that would have worked, I thought that would be really neat is the aquarium rocks that you use in the fish tank. So if you're in Walmart and you see some of the, you know, bags of the rocks that you put at the bottom of an aquarium, that would also work anything like that but I just wanted this guy to look like he's made of stone and when you put this in the blender you're just kind of pulsing it and you just pulse it pulsing it means you're just pressing that button down in little intervals shaking it up and kind of checking it out because you don't want to make it like a flower that you're going to cook with you definitely want it to look like gravel so after he dries the next day this is what he looks like and I took him out and I also spray painted him with two coats of clear varnish. So he's already sealed in pretty good, but I want to really encase this guy and make it so that none of this gravel falls off or is loose. I just didn't want to deal with that. I did brush it off before I sprayed him too. Make sure you do that. Make sure you brush off any loose areas, fill in any hole areas with a little more glue, let it dry again, take it outside, spray it with a varnish. And then this is your final step of just kind of sponging on a Mod Podge. And this is what he looks like when he dries. He is so cute. My last step to get the look that I'm after is to sponge a little Little bit of the dark gray I believe it's called oh it's not it's not black it's like a super dark smoky gray from apple barrel paint I can't think of what the name is but they only have one it's not pewter gray it's it's the next one I think it's charcoal gray or paint concrete no I think it's concrete but anyway I just want them to look like those little Beatrice Potter bunnies that kind of have the little spots I love this craft you guys and I'm tying a bow on like the one I saw but this is my absolute favorite Easter craft I've ever made. It looks so high end. It's awesome. If you had fun today, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel. I appreciate it so, so much. Thank you, you guys. And as always, until the next video, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.